All right, I see we have some people joining us. So we'll just give a few minutes because uh, we just pressed the button. So give us just a second and we'll get rolling in just a few minutes. All right, well, I wanna be mindful of everyone's time because uh, you know, I know we did this on late notice, so we're gonna get started. We are recording this in case anybody that you know misses it or has further questions or anything, you certainly ask them there. Um, before we get started, if you have any questions you'd like us to address, please drop them right in the chat or the Q&A and we'll be checking those and are happy to get to them because after all, this whole thing is about trying to give you as much information as you can to make the correct choice for your family as we're going into this kind of new transition that we're in. Um, as we get started, let us just say, I'm really excited that we are at this point. Uh, this year has been really hard for kids. We've seen it um, from the kids, whether they've been in the, the hubs with us or summer camp. So anything that, you know, puts us more towards normal, I think is a really good thing. And, you know, we've been looking at the numbers and the metrics as much as anybody, I think, and I'm really glad to see them all moving in the right direction. So I think this is a really good thing. I'm glad that the kids are going to get to see their friends and be with, you know, just their classmates again. And uh, we're excited to transition to this bar tea as well. So I wanna take you through a few kind of outlines of things. First, I wanna talk about what the next couple of weeks are gonna look like, then what the general day will look like when the children are attending, and then uh, just some questions that we have uh, already gotten submitted to us, and then I'll take any others that we have. So as we get started, the next couple of weeks, I just wanna walk through this coming Friday, March 5th, is the last day of the distance learning hubs, the equity hubs. Uh, they have a couple of different names, but they end this Friday. We had hoped that we'd be able to get space at a few sites where principals had approved for us to be in for training next week. There's still an outside shot that that might happen, but it would be at isolated locations and we'll let you know about that. So uh, unfortunately, uh, these, these groups that we've been in for a long time, they are coming to an end. Uh, please make sure your children are bringing the things back. We will send them with everything, but uh, do encourage them to bring their things home so we're getting everything cleared out. Um, Beginning on March 15th, we are transitioning to a more traditional bar T, the before and after care that you might be normally used to uh, for the most part. Uh, currently at all the bar T locations, we're going to offer, offer uh, before and after care. That's gonna include Wednesdays also, because as I'm sure you're familiar, um, the children are gonna go back uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is a remote learning day, and then Thursday, Friday, they're back in school. So the typical bar T day will look like the normal before care and after care on Mondays and Tuesdays. Wednesday will be a full day where we'll take care of the children's distance learning and what they need, and then we're gonna have a theme day and have a lot of fun. And then Thursday and Friday will be normal again. Now that is for the before and after. There are some sites that we're going to be able to offer middle of the day care. All right, that's very similar to the hubs that we're doing right now. Um, these are especially useful for the uh, third through fifth graders in a lot of cases. Um, it depends on which schools to which grades are going back and when, but a lot of these older children are going to have off weeks. So it's not at every location and we're trying to uh, get more space but we're going to try to have um, coverage for those children. So, you know, everyone can still go to their jobs and the kids can do their schoolwork uh, without being an on week, off week uh, kind of schedule. Um, there's a very strong chance that those might not be at the home school that the children are at, but we have a list of those to let you know kind of where our options are. So from that is kind of a whole program. I want to talk you just through the general bar T day with us. So, uh, the hours are a little bit adjusted. They're earlier than what we're doing now, but they're later than what we would normally do in a typical school year. But we were asked to provide a little extra time for building service to get things ready. So um, what we're doing is we're starting at 730 in the morning. You drop the children off and we will do our mornings like we typically do. We will um, be keeping all the children while they're with us in the cohorts, in the smaller cohorts, uh, 15 people to a room is what we're limited to at this point. 
So we're going to be in these smaller groups when they're with Barty. Now, at the end of morning care, the children will transition into their classroom. So there will be a kind of reshuffling into their classroom cohort from their Barty cohort. All right. And the same thing happens again at the end of the day, where at the end of the day, the children will go from their classroom cohort into their Barty cohort. So there is a little bit of mixing between the classes, but then when they're in there, they're not with other Barty children. Okay. And we're going to follow those guidelines for as long as they are what's recommended to us. And uh, that's kind of how you know we're using our measures to try to keep the kids as safe as possible. Um, a lot of people have asked us about flexibility. Flexibility is something I kind of pride myself on with BART um, in terms of, you know, choose whatever you want, AM, PM. Unfortunately, we're just really limited on a few things. Um, one is the space that we have. It really counts and there's not a lot of it. Uh, no principals at this point are saying, hey, we got lots of room for you. They're saying we can give you maybe the gym or APR, maybe a classroom, but space is very limited. So that's a challenge. We're also still beholden to these smaller ratios and the smaller class size. So where typically we can kind of absorb, um, you know, children who don't come on every day because there's not a limit on the number of seats we really have. And, you know, it doesn't really matter because it all evens out. It just doesn't at this point. So I really hope that we're able to bring in some of these flexible schedules. And one of the things we are going to look at is when, um, when we do have availability in some of these individual classrooms, we will reach out and say, hey, there might be some space here or there, um, but that's gonna be kind of on an individual school basis. And you know, I wish we could say generally it's gonna be this, but we're gonna to try to take things on a case by case basis with that. Um, I have gotten a lot of questions and this is a big thing that we're trying to decide is, um, where is Barty gonna be? Are you going to be at every single school? So here's the situation that we're in right now. Uh, we are running up against kind of two problems. One is uh, the space in the building. The principals need to have space for us. Uh, you know, you, we can't run childcare if there's nowhere for us to be. So they need space for us. And obviously that's very limited at this point. And there also has to be sufficient interest. There has to be enough people to sign up um, for us to, you know, frankly, uh, be able to pay our staff to be there. So. If there's sufficient enrollment, we're good to go. We're generally looking for, if we can get 10 children in a program, we're good to open. But we know that there are some that won't have that. So we're going to try to be creative where we combine in different areas if possible. But the best way to make sure that there's T at your school is just to you know contact any friends or anybody who you might know. If we can get to 10, we're good and we can run T. If we can't, then that's a challenge. Uh, to my understanding, we should be able to do the before and after care on Wednesdays at every bar T school, should we have sufficient interest. Um, there are a few principals that are just having a, a hard time figuring out where to fit everything, um, but we'll be able to figure that part out if we have the interest. Really where we're limited on space is those A, B schedules for the middle of the day, because obviously a principal's priority is making sure that their general classes can start back up, which I certainly understand. Um, a couple things that I just want to mention, if you are currently on uh, scholarships or vouchers, those will continue, all right? Nothing should change about those. Um, the plan just transfers in. If this is the first time you've heard that we have scholarships or vouchers, um, first of all, I apologize, terrible communication on our part, but please reach out to us. We actually have a new position at Barty. Uh, Joel Antizana, who was one of our directors, is helping people with the Maryland voucher and enrollment process. So if you have any questions or want assistance in getting your child care paid for, please email vouchers at barty.com. Uh, that goes straight to Joel. Um, he speaks Spanish and English, so he can help out everybody with trying to get them enrolled in that program, which will, again, help pay for um, the continuation of this child care. Uh, the last thing I kind of wanted to go over in the you know, just general information and announcements is just how to enroll. If you're a current BART family, meaning you're currently coming to one of the distance learning hubs or the equity hubs, the only thing you need to do is speak with your BART staff person. Now they should have already done this and if they haven't, please let me know. But they should have asked you what your preference is going to be. We wanna make this as easy as possible. We don't even have to type in all your information again or pay registration fees or any of that nonsense. So we're just gonna ask you what your preference is and they will confirm that with you. We will give that to our accounts team and then they will send you a confirmation just to make sure we've got everything correctly recorded. If you are a returning BART family, meaning you're not with us right now, but you, uh, you were in years past, or if you're like a summer family or someone just on our email list, we're asking you to register at just registration.bart.com um, where we will start processing those on Wednesday. 
Uh, the last thing I kind of wanted to say just about the enrollment and registration, I have mentioned that we're not going to be at every site. We are going to make those decisions by Thursday of this week, or by the end of this week. We're going to hopefully make them by Thursday, but I'm giving us the grace period of an extra day. Um, we are, we'll make all those announcements. You will not be charged for anything if you can't come to Bar T, if the site is not open. We're going to work with everyone to try to get everyone taken care of and move to different spots, but we'll have all those announced uh, by the end of the week. Okay, and with that, I'm going to go to a couple questions that we have here. So let me take a look. All right, my child has virtual chess lessons in the afternoon. Will Barty be able to facilitate my child attending the virtual chess lessons? Yes, we'd be happy to do that. Um, you, one of the nice things about having these smaller groups is more individual attention. So we can certainly help out if the children need to attend any Zoom classes or anything afterwards. Uh, we're there, we'd love to, so happy to help. All right, next question, will siblings be in the same Barty cohort? Yes, they will. Now, they will reshuffle from their uh, typical schoolroom classes. I would assume they're not in the same class while they're in school, but then they'll reshuffle into a bar T one. As we are using cohorting as one of our risk mitigation strategies, we know that keeping family members and traveling groups together is actually very helpful in you know mitigating any COVID spread. So yeah, siblings will be in the same one together. Next question, can we alternate days or weeks with our children? So um, you can't alternate days. You would have to pay for the full plan, but you can come whichever days you want to. You certainly do not have to attend every single day. Uh, that's on you as to your choice. Um, in terms of weeks, yes, provided there's space. One of the things you may have noticed when going through kind of these emails or registration is that we're switching to weekly billing for the rest of this school year, just because there's been so much up in the air and, um, Frankly, it's difficult for, for us and our kind of accounts team to keep on doing refunds and credits and all that type of thing. So we would rather just bill you for the uh, actual service you're using. So um, let me give you an example. We know that there are older children who are in this AB schedule. And so for one week, maybe they're coming to school and you need the before and after care, but the next week, gosh, they can't even go in the school building. So we've got to figure it out otherwise. In that case, you'd only pay for the weeks that you're coming. All right, we're not going to pay for the extra weeks. Um, it is all provided that we do have enough space for everyone, but that's how that would work. All right, with the fact that grade five is on site every other week, is there an option for signing up for Bar T every other week? Yes, so there's not an option on the website um, to do that. What we would ask you to do is to register selecting the full plan and then email help at barty.com and we can make that that alternating plan. Um, I would really love to be able to do that, but uh, this was kind of a temporary thing and we were throwing it together a little bit just to make sure that we can get everyone registered and we're childcare people, not tech people. So I hope you'll forgive us on that one. All right. There is a rumor that certain grade levels at Woodacres will not be serviced with the Bar T program between now and the end of school this year. Is that accurate? And if so, which grades are being excluded from the program? Okay, so uh, there's no exclusion or anything. Um, the only thing that we're working on is just trying to find space at the schools. And I'll say that in general, the Down County schools, um, Bannockburn, Woodacres, Somerset, uh, Kensington Parkwood, these Down County schools, have very uh, tight space limitations because a large percentage of their student body is returning. So there's not a lot of space. In fact, I do know that there's not space at Woodacres for the A and B schedule for the middle of the day. There is certainly space for the AM and PM and the Wednesdays. That's not going to be a problem. But the A, B schedule, there is just uh, the space issue. And it's something that's not unique to Woodacres. A lot of schools are having this problem. Um, it is pretty bad down in that area. I can say one thing we are working with the county on, it's a long shot, but we are trying to get space at Radnor, which is down um, pretty close to Woodacres. We were licensed there uh, as Potomac Elementary for the past couple of years as they've been rebuilding their school building. And we're trying to be able to operate in that um, space because they know that there are these families who are gonna be kind of left behind on the off week schedule. So that's a possibility. As soon as we find out about that, we will let you know, but it's still something that isn't under our control. It's under um, uh, community as public facilities control. So we're working with them. All right. Let me see. How might we learn about or request transportation from the child's school to a Bar T location if Bar T isn't offered at that school? 
So I think you would reach out to Montgomery County Transportation. Um, yes, I'm looking over at Rory, who actually knows these in, these answers. Uh, you'd reach out to Montgomery County Transportation. Um, I would talk to your principal is probably a good way to get a hold of that. But unfortunately, that's not something BART controls. It's kind of offered through the county. So I would reach out to them. Um, yeah, that'd be a good idea. Okay. If your school only shows before care, um, after care for registration, does that mean that off week care is not available at that site? Yes, it does. So what that question is asking is when I'm selecting my school, if I don't see the A and B schedule on there, does that mean that it's not going to be available? And yeah, that's the case, unfortunately. The, some principals have already told us that there will certainly not be space, so we've taken it off. Um, we are going to post a list of all the schools that do have space, so you can look at ones that are nearby that might be in. Uh, alternate location that you could use and I uh, apologize for that. I wish we, I wish we had the space for everyone. Okay. All right. Let me read. This is a longer question. If a student's on a wait list to return in-person learning, I believe us, so the start time bar two would be 830. Okay. So about the times. So the times at all of the BART um, locations with the exception of Mac, are going to switch to the 7.30 to 6 p.m. time. I, I might be wrong about Poolsville full day. If you are a Poolsville full day remaining virtual, uh, I might be off on that. But every other place, it is uh, the full 7.30 to 6 are the hours. Um, let me see. So I had someone asking about any preference for um, teachers or anybody else. Uh, getting into the program. So the only way we're really offering priority right now is to families that are currently using us uh, just because they're currently have their children in care. So we wanna give the right of first refusal to them. And then we're offering it to our BART customers I've used in the past and then we're going outside of that. So there's not really, we're not getting down to the granular level on you know who deserves a spot or who doesn't. Um, we're just trying to make as much room available. And this is also something we're gonna keep on doing is to keep on trying to get more space uh, and then moving this forward. All right. If you are in an equity hub that is in your child's homeschool and you want your child to remain with virtual learning, is there an option to continue using the equity hub or does your child have to go to in-person learning within the classroom to continue? All right, so this is a little bit of a sticky area. Um, we are fine with it. We are totally cool if, if you are remaining virtual and uh, would stay at BART and one of the ABs um, full-time, we're okay with it. Some principals might have an issue with that and that's kind of on a person-by-person -person case, but BART is fine with it. So if, if, if you're good with it, we're good with it too. All right, let me take a look. Um, except pre-K Head Start students in the program, unfortunately do have to be enrolled in kindergarten at least. Um, so they would need to be aged to attend the school. Oh, no, no. Why is there such a substantial increase in the fees for BART and what I was paying for both my kids? Now I'm paying for one, please explain. All right, fees are very different this year and it's mostly related to the number of staff that we can have with the kids. So in years past, the ratios were different. We could have, you know, basically more children in an all purpose room to absorb the cost of all the staff. Here we don't, it is, you know, 13 children and two staff in the hubs as they are right now. And we can't take any more children than are enrolled in those spots. All right, so the cost right now is dropping from the distance learning hubs and the equity hubs to what this cost will be, but we still have to pay our staff the salary that they're earning. So we're actually, we're taking a bet. This is not a financially um, healthy thing for us to be doing. We know there are a lot of kids and families that need the service. Um, we have tried to make the pricing in such a way that it's flexible with the weekly pricing and um, lowering it, but this is what it has to be in order for us to be able to afford paying our staff. And I can't wait till it gets back. But right now, um, I'm sorry, this is kind of where we are with it. Uh, opening at Goshen, um, we are going to be able to have AM and PM and Wednesday care. We are still working on them to see whether we can get the um, middle of the day, but as of right now, the answer has been no. Okay, do you think in the future you'd have a just Wednesday all day available each week? So uh, this parent is asking, if we just wanted Wednesdays, we're good all the other days, but we just need that Wednesday care, is that an option? So not right now, but what I hope to be able to do is once we kind of see how many people are enrolled and how many spaces we have, to be able to open that on kind of a school by school basis if we're able to. So 
The answer for now is no, but if we have flexibility, I would like to open that up because after all, we want to meet the needs of, you know, you guys and the kids. All right, if your child attends in-person on alternate weeks, will you only be charging for the weeks that your child attends school? So instead of every week, you'd be charged every other week. Yes, you have that correct. You would only be charged for the weeks your child is in school. So you won't be charged for the weeks that they uh, cannot attend. All right, if my child does not return to school until April 5th, will he start on BART on that date or will he be part of the Learning Hub beginning in March? So the Learning Hubs are closing this Friday. Um, if we have the A, B space in a school, um, and we do have the list that are there, if we have space, then they could continue. Um, but if we don't have space, then we don't have an area where the children could physically be on those days. So no, we wouldn't have the availability to take them. And we look forward to seeing them for before and after care. But yeah. If schools need to temporarily close for a period of time due to a COVID-related issue, would bar tea be an option for children to attend during the school day? All right, so um, essentially one of the things that uh, I've liked that we've been able to do is through the distance learning hubs and the equity hubs we've been having, BART has been able to make the call on a lot of these health and COVID issues. And though I understand it can be frustrating, we've been very aggressive on um, keeping our people safe, closing programs where we've had um, symptoms and uh, you know things like that. We won't have that control anymore. Um, that will rest on the county and it'll rest on the school itself. So. If the school closes, that means that the space that Barty would have in that school would be closed as well. Um, if your child is in a child care, you're actually through the state of Maryland not allowed to enroll them in a different child care while your first one is quarantined. It's a pretty small rule, but you know um, it is designed to keep everyone safe by not having children who uh, might have COVID or contact come into contact with other ones. So that'll be on a school by school basis for the most part. But if we're allowed to be open, we certainly will be. Was the maximum for children able to be enrolled at a BART program? So it depends on the number of classrooms that we get or the number of spaces that we get. Currently, you can only have 15 people in any room uh, as a child care provider. So we are trying to get multiple classrooms so that we can take multiple cohorts of children, but the individual class sizes are 15. I know it's not a great answer, um, but it does vary on a school to school basis. I'm hopeful we'll be able to take everybody who needs us at least for the um, before and after care. Be able to share information about a possible Monday through Friday learning hub if a child isn't going back to school in person. Uh, that would probably be next week or so, I would guess, because we're trying to make the announcements on which locations we're going to be able to offer this Thursday. So in that case, and you know, as enrollment as is going on, we should know whether we will have um, flexibility probably next week or the week after. All right, let me see. Will children still be grouped in pods for before and after care? Yep. Um, they will remain in the cohorts. We'll do a little reshuffling with those. Let me see. Will there be BART available on days off from school and during spring break? So BART schedule is intending on staying the exact same. We'll be open for spring break with the exception of uh, Good Friday and Easter Monday. Um, and I can't remember the dates of those, even though my group told me that beforehand. Sorry. Um, so Good Friday, Easter Monday, we are closed, but we are open for spring break and can't wait to have some awesome theme weeks. It's going to be really fun. All right, let me see. Uh, can a family sign up for full-time before and after care three days a week? This is all going into kind of part-time plans. I addressed that a little bit earlier, but I'll redress it here. Um, we just don't have the flexibility we used to have where you could have a, a bigger child care program and many children in it, you know, the, the child missing for one morning or one afternoon and having this flexible schedule was kind of filled in by all of the other ones. But because we have to maintain this cohorting model, because our ratios are very strict and the space is limited, we just don't have empty seats that can you know, absorb the cost of children not attending uh, those. So right now we don't have part-time options. I think we'll be able to offer them where we have flexibility once we kind of know where things are, but I can't guarantee that. So that's, that's where we stand with the flexibility at this point. Can you clarify what it means to have space in the A and B schedule? For example, are you saying that the down county schools won't offer bar tea at all? Are you saying that if your ch child is a kid that they can come to bar tea on A weeks? All right, so the way this works is the A and B weeks, that means we need classroom space every day uh, during the school day because we're going to help the children with their distance learning on their off weeks. But you might be an A kid, so your off week might be the first week, and you might be a B kid, whose so off week is the second week. So we need space in the school 
during the full day. So that's what I'm referring to as to whether there's space in the program. It just means for the full day. We're anticipating having space at every bar tea program for the before and after and Wednesdays. So if that's what you need, and by the way, that can also mean for the children who would just be attending on those off weeks. So if you have a fifth grader who's an A kid, um, they would have space on their um, AM and PM schedule, but which means we may not have space for the full day. This gets pretty confusing and I've kind of confused myself even talking about it, so I hope that makes sense. Um, but so yes, if your child is coming to school, they should be able to have space in an AM or PM plus Wednesday, the weeks that they're at school. What we can't guarantee is the weeks that they're not at school. Okay. Is there a cutoff point at which you will decide whether coverage will run during the day? My daughter's a Rachel Carson. I don't want to go into specifics. Uh, cutoff point which you'll decide whether coverage will run during the day. So in general, where we are able to run the A and B schedules, we're intending on doing it. If we have very low numbers, we're talking twos and threes, children enrolled, four kids enrolled, then we probably won't run one at that location. But we're hopeful that we'll be able to kind of fill things in above that. So um, really anywhere above like five or six kids uh, would be great, um, provided that we do have the space. Right now, the space is the limiting factor that we're working with for most schools. Uh, yes, clarifying, um, if an A, B schedule option doesn't appear on your uh, chosen school, it means that the, t the uh, principal has told us there is no middle of the day space. So we don't have the A, B option at that location. Um, I think we put uh, in the chat or we posted it somewhere, the list of schools that currently do have AB um, availability. So uh, you could try to register for one of those. I, I wish we had space everywhere, um, but we have tried. <laughs> uh, cost is the same per week, even if in the alternating weeks, he won't be going to bar tea all day. Um, as I said, any weeks that your child is not attending bar tea, you don't owe us anything for those weeks. So if if they're in the alternating schedule, uh, then you don't owe us anything for the weeks that they don't attend. Let me see. Uh, a and B schedule might be too crowded for the off weeks. Can they go to a school with more space during their off weeks? Yes. So uh, what that parent essentially is asking is if there isn't room in my homeschool, could my child who, you know, one week might attend their homeschool, go to a different location uh, for their distance learning on their off week? And the answer to that is yes. Uh, we're working on those and, you know, making sure we have enough space. I mentioned earlier that uh, one of the options for down county schools, uh, maybe Radnor, where we have operated uh, for the past few years and still have a license there. So yes, they can go to different locations on their off weeks. All right, let me see. If your child is on the wait list and the school he or she attends has a full day program and they're removed from the wait list and now needs the A and B week schedule, will they need to attend a different location when they're moved off the wait list? It depends on space. I think I'm understanding that question correctly. Um, it'll depend on space. Listen, we generally want to be as flexible as we possibly can. We understand that you know no child is the same as any other child. There is no cookie cutter recipe that works for any family or any kid. So that's why Barty has always been about choice and individual attention. That's what we're going to do. In air, if, if you come to us with this issue, reach out to us and we're going to see what we can do to try to, try to make it work. Um, but it's going to be probably on an individual basis. All right. Do you know if the COVID school age grant will continue to fully cover if we select a virtual only model with Barty? I think that it does. I think that if they're getting a current scholarship or voucher that they can continue in Barty even full. Yes, it does. Getting the thumbs up, yes, it, you can continue with that full time. What are the protocols in place in the event of a COVID outbreak at one of the schools? Is there a quarantine period and would fees still be paid in that period? Okay, so MCPS is still communicating their policy on exactly what will happen in the event of a COVID closure or anything like that. Um, we're going to follow whatever the MCPS's policies have been. But we've learned a lot from this past summer, all school year, being in with the kids and kind of dealing with this. Um, we're going to follow all the safety things that we have been doing, and we know how to keep everyone um, healthy through these things. We do have a two-week period where if the school closes us down or if the health department closes us down um, for two weeks or less, then we're not refunding or crediting for that. 
beyond that, we will. And the simple reason for that is if, if a school or cohort has to um, quarantine, so do our staff. And they don't deserve to not be paid for the two weeks that they might have to quarantine. Um, so two weeks is what we're asking. Any closure longer than that, obviously, we will. Um, God, I hope we don't have anything like that. But we will uh, work with you on that. But we, we can't um, refund for closures less than two weeks. I'm sorry. But that, has, that has been our policy since... Um, I think the beginning of this school year actually. All right, if we are hoping to start March 15th, do we need to start recording daily temperatures? If I remember correctly, this was required for children attending the distance hubs. So the answer to this question is actually no, um, because MCPS is taking different mitigation strategies than we are, and we are aligning ourselves with what they're doing. So I know that MCPS is doing the weekly attestation that uh, families must fill out and they're sending thermometers home. Listen, we still think it is best policy to be taking your children's temperature every day. And, you know, we still encourage that type of thing, but we're not going to be requiring the seven days beforehand because Montgomery County is not requiring the seven days beforehand and we need to kind of line up our policies with theirs at this point. Um, that is in terms of the check-ins and things like that. We are still going to be extremely, um, I don't want to say rigid, but thorough with things like the mask wearing at all times, the social distancing, the cohorting. Uh, those are not best practices that we plan on uh, abandoning anytime soon. Will staff help us to determine what school is closest to us for a full day program? The full day program will not be available at your child's homeschool. Certainly, I cannot attest to my uh, staff members, you know, geography knowledge, but absolutely. Um, we generally have a pretty robust understanding of where things are. You can also always shoot me an email or shoot an email to any of the, the Bar T staff and we can help you finding the, the location that suits your needs the best. If my child be attending AM and PM on off days and full day at Bar T on off weeks, what is the cost? The cost be for, okay, so the cost is 190 if they are uh, for a one week of, um, before and after plus Wednesday care. It is 240 if you're coming full time, basically, meaning um, the off weeks, you're still doing your same times. So your cost weekly is 240 per week. So one week on, you're at AM, PM and Wednesday, one week off your full day, your weekly cost every week is 240. If you're full distance learning, meaning you're not going back at all, the cost is 290. There are a few things that vary with this. Please check the website, please check your individual site, but that's what the costs are um, for those. So in your case here, we were asking about uh, them coming before and after, and then they're coming the full week. The next week, your cost on a weekly basis would be 240. Is there a $100 registration fee for each child or will it just be the one registration fee for all children? It's just for per sales order and only if you're just starting with Barty at this point. If you are already in a distance learning hub or an equity hub, there is not a registration fee. Um, so you're good. How do we register for another location for off weeks? So in this case, what you would do is uh, choose the location that the children would be attending for these off weeks. And then just shoot an email to help at barty.com. In general, that's kind of like the cheat code for Barty. Anything with your uh, account or individual things, help at barty.com will get you Lori and Laura who can help you out. But what we would do is we would then adjust your particular sales order so that you're only being charged for the weeks that you're using at the location that you're using them. Will kids get to play outside during aftercare? Yes, please, my goodness. Oh my gosh, this must've been a softball question. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we think that being outside is not only healthy and good for children every single day, regardless of how cold it is or anything like that, but we also know it's very um, safe and healthy place to be during all these COVID things. So we're gonna be getting outside quite a bit. And frankly, I'm a little, uh, got a little cabin fever from the winter anyways, so I can't wait to go outside anyways. Okay. Um, Summer camp. All right, so summer camp, we are rolling it out. Uh, I hope you got our email that um, registration starts on April 1st. Uh, no joke, no April Fools or anything. We are starting registration on April 1st. We're really, really excited. We can't wait to give the kids the summer that they've earned and they deserve. So we're really looking forward to it. We're going to have information on April 1st. Um, we are still gathering info, which is why I don't want to go into too many specifics. Like for instance, right now, MCPS is being a little cagey about some of the kids camps. We know that they're going to open them up, but they're not saying officially yet. So we're just trying to get a few more details. We expect to have everything worked out by then. And we can't wait for summer. Um, really, really excited for it. 
All right, and let's see, I don't know that I have any other questions. I'll say if you have any questions, please throw them in the chat at this point. Um, and I will try to get to those. And I know some people are typing in questions also. So one of my team members might also reply to those. But um, and the last thing I just wanted to, you know, say before we get into any others is kind of a just a thank you to all of you. Um, you know, we don't take this responsibility lightly. Um, most of the people who work at Parti have kids and we know what it's like to ask someone else to take care of them, and especially in times like this. And I really appreciate the trust you've given us because it has allowed us to keep a lot of our Parti people employed and keeping us moving on. And we can't wait to get back to kind of a more normal schedule. So thank you for everything you guys have done in supporting us. All right, a couple more questions as we get to them. They're typing them into the, the shared Google Doc right now. <laughs> Just to clarify, full day care is 290. I do not have an option of A, B week because I'm a teacher, so I need full day care every day. Yes, so if it is full day care every day, um, the cost is 290. That is basically just the cost of what the distance learning is right now broken out into a weekly cost. Um, so yes, that is the cost. I will say if you're a teacher though, reach out to us because we do have an, uh, a teacher discount um, this year. So that should help with that also. Uh, sending the phone number of Bar T for me to speak with someone. Okay, phone number for Bar T. We're going to put it in chat so you have it there, but I'm going to tell you it also. The phone number is 301 948 3172. That's the number for the main office. Uh, I give out my cell phone to everybody. That number is 301 674 7608. But understand if you're calling me on my cell phone, I'm the dumbest person who works at Bar T, so you're probably not getting the best answer. So I'm happy to, um, to answer any questions that I might be able to. Uh, and again, email addresses, help at Bar T is a very easy one. If you're looking for help in scholarships and paying for uh, childcare, vouchers at Bar T. And then, um, you know, all of our other ones are listed there. I'm Jay Richardson at Bar T. And, you know, the other ones are pretty easy to find as well. Oh, I'll tell them stuff. Okay. All right. I don't see any other questions. I see some very nice messages for you all. Thank you so much. Um, it's, you know, uh, really warms our spirits to, uh, you know, work with your kids and get to see them. And we can't wait to uh, get back to a more normal bar tea. So, and if you don't, if, if we didn't get to your question, if I missed something, I'm not great at Zoom. Um, again, please just send it my way, uh, jrichardson at barty.com. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that we might have missed. So, all right, well, thanks everybody. I hope you all have a wonderful night and enjoy, and uh, we will get out more information as soon as we possibly can as we get these details firmed up. So thank you so much and enjoy your evening. Thank you.